All right. Welcome, everybody, to today's class. We got good news. I was at, finally, you, you know what? The past couple of weeks, I've been so busy um, with getting back on YouTube and uh, opening in school back open, um, doing personal codes and, uh, you know, things that I'm doing here locally. Uh, it's just been so busy. And uh, I, I had wanted for the past couple of weeks to get this um, download ready for you guys, some kind of secure file so you guys could navigate to it and we, we could go through the process of, of downloading and then working through any of the technical issues because there are some. And uh, yesterday, I'm happy to report that uh, I was finally able to meet with, with Sita, who had great patience with me. Um, even when I finally got her into the Zoom, I had to I had to go and, you know, I was in the middle of doing chores and laundry was going and I had to switch out laundry and hang it up and all that kind of stuff. So she's sitting there waiting on me for about 10, 15 minutes. And finally, uh, I could meet with her. We could go through the process. Um, I don't know, maybe it was a, it was a couple of hours of that, um, maybe an hour and a half of trying to pass her the file. And then when she got it, she got it downloaded and uh, immediately um you know it was uh it was the technical issues okay so with with windows 10 and 11 um because this software is so old the one i'm, I'm giving you the taurus off one uh that we we got to tell the computer that it's okay to run it and, and um i think when the software was written uh from what my friend was telling me it was 32 bit and now we're running 64 bit and so there's resolution issues and and a few things that you got to do um, to get it to run on your computer, but we can do it. And uh, Sita was able to figure that out yesterday. So I am guys. When she when I passed it to her, I got I got to tell you, I was praying, <laughs> Father, please show her what to do. Show her how. I was praying. I was praying too, Jonathan. And you figured it out. And I'm so <laughs> proud of you for doing that. I'm just so thank you because that means that we can do that with each one of you. And so yeah. So what I was thinking is I'll create a document with all the instructions that you told me, right? Right. What to download and what file to run and what comes up and you know. So I'll just create a, a small document today or tomorrow and I'll send it to you. Very good. And you can edit it and then we can start the process. Yeah. And we'll probably meet together and do a share, you know, share screen and show you guys visually and have it recorded so you can watch it over and over again. Um, that kind of thing. And then if anybody needs help, um, you know, with, uh, myself and Sita will get with you. I'm, I'm sure if she's if she's ready to do that. And, uh, Yes, sure. No problem. Well, we will get it all worked out. And so when we we're so we're trying to we're moving forward to try to get everybody on the same sheet of music. Okay. So I'm trying to get this to you you guys all simultaneously. So uh I think there's 30 of you now, and uh, we got to do that for everybody, right? So hopefully it will go smoothly. I'm praying for that. Um you know, we've got intelligent people here with skill sets that I don't have, and um uh, you know, part of praying over this class and getting started, I asked the Father for that to send people with different gifts and skill sets that you know, you know, could contribute and and um, you know, edify this whole group. So I know that there's a couple of you that are techies uh, that are part of this group, and um, I'm thankful for you guys. But but also the rest of you that have other gifts um, that you were able to you know contribute to the class. So good news there. So we'll we'll now start that process and get you guys uh, to the point where you've got Torsol, and then the other code program I wanted you guys to have was CodeFinder because of the Bashida in there, and it's just oh my gosh, I'm so we we are just getting started to doing groundbreaking work, okay? Because nobody else is doing this right, and so. It's really exciting for me to have a group of people that I can run alongside. And, and I've, I've used the analogy of putting you on the bicycle and taking the training wheels off. And if you guys can think back to that day when you first learned how to ride a bicycle, right? And whoever that was, your father, your mother, your grandfather, whoever that was that taught you that, right? That was a special moment in time for, for you and that person. 
to be able to see you take off and be able to conquer riding that bike, doing the balance and, and, and learning, you know, everything, even seeing, you know, the little crashes and, and little boo-boos that you may have, right? Because we're going to encounter that as a group uh, when you start. You know, you might make a, your your computer can crash like yesterday with Sita. As soon as she, you know, had that uh, torso pulled up, immediately wanted to crash. And so, uh, and every time I saw that, my heart sank. I was just feeling, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is going to happen over and over again with everybody. Um, those kind of things might happen. Um, there's There are times where you can run a sequence of letters that you're searching and maybe you don't understand about um searching smaller areas as as opposed to the whole bible for you know very small um uh access terms and what will happen when you do that the computer will just uh kind of go crazy okay because it's a lot of computations going on simultaneously and your computer may freeze it may just uh you know the program just die and go down you have to open it up again uh, and sometimes you can lose your work uh, when you're doing that, right? So you, you may be working on a on a table, and you've got several hours in it, and then suddenly you're typing in a two letter word that you're looking in a matrix that's got several, you know, thousand letters or or several hundred letters, and then suddenly because of the the um, probability of each one of those finds, imagine that, just looking for two letters because some words are only two letters. If you don't know what you're doing, and you type that in. Your computer will immediately, all these mathematical calculations that it's doing for all of those possibilities might overwhelm it, right? And that can be frustrating. You might freak out and go, what's going on, right? And you're going to want somebody to ask questions, right? That's why we're here. And we're going to walk through all of that. So I'm like grandfather who's running alongside with you on the bicycle and teaching you how to do that. And, and you're doing the work, okay? And the Holy Spirit is going to come alongside and inspire you right and feel you and and direct you right but you're going to be the one doing the work and doing the balance and keeping on that bicycle and keeping pedaling and things like that right anytime an uh, issue arises as a group um or as an individual we will address it we will we will overcome that thing i believe each one of you are supposed to be here and being uh, you know learning this and being inspired and uh, i think that, that the father is blessing this and that he is keeping us protected in that. And, and just by witnessing what, what happened yesterday. And you guys, I got to tell you, um, it, I was stressed for, for a couple of weeks because I was so overwhelmed with uh, the workload, but also knowing that this was going to be an obstacle we had to overcome, uh, which was these downloads uh, and working with older software. But I think we've got it figured out and that we are uh, you know well on our way um, to each of you getting to a point where you're doing your own code searches and so i'm excited about that and so i'm just blessed that each of you are here and um, i hope that you pray about this really sincerely and commit to to learning with me uh being your your mentor and your teacher for potentially the next year uh, i think after that time you guys will be very proficient in in what you're doing and uh, you'll you'll do great things so all right so <clears throat> Let's start out with your vocabulary. Well, I want to pray first, but I want to start with, with your vocabulary. And then, uh, you know, I've got a short presentation uh, from a, a YouTube channel that I found, but also Scott's here, and I'm hoping he can share a few codes with you guys. And then maybe we'll talk about some methodology if we have more time um, at the end. So um, let me start with a prayer. We'll go right into your vocabulary. And then, uh, Scott, are you are you ready to share some codes, brother? I sure am. Uh, can you hear me okay? Absolutely, yes. Uh, there's going to be some background noise because I'm at the local fast food place uh, borrowing their internet. No worries. You sound good. All right. Yeah, all right. We're just so thankful, Father, for this day and this opportunity to do your will, and do your work in these codes. And uh, we're just asking that you would dwell with us today, Father, that you would keep us protected, that you would inspire us, that you would lead us in every way, but, but also... Uh, reveal your 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 secret things to us, Father, as you promised in your word. We ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. All right. Let's get started with your vocabulary, which is a little different today. We're going to be talking about conjunctives 
and some prefixes. So, you know, really small letters. These are very easy today that we're going to do. And we'll be talking more about these later as you progress through the course when it comes to prefixes and suffixes and and um, uh, conject conjunctive um, letters and words. OK, so let's get started. I will screen share now and. Um, where is it? There it is right there. We're going to be using Google. I know I keep talking about do it in Hebrew, but uh, Google is just so um, convenient. Um, you know, and I complain about it sometimes, but <laughs> it could be a little better. I think with the AI, it might, it might be that way. It is what it is. So very first word that we're going to talk about today is Akri. And Akri is an Aleph, a Het, a Resh, and a Yod. After is is what this word is. Akri. Um, you you'll see this. This is the root word for end of days, which is Akrit. And this is not one of your your um. What I'm about to show you right now is not one of your your. Uh, vocabulary words i'm just showing you that this is a root of something really bigger in your text which is akrit hayamin which is uh the end of days google's got it the rest of the days but it's the end of the days you'll see this over and over in the, in the scriptures through the prophets talking about the end of days but the root of that again is akrit after Akri. very next word is very diverse it's only two letters and that is l now sometimes l can refer to um, yah it is the very base name of the father l some some translate that into english as god i don't like to use that word and i'll teach you about that later but l uh, is a conjunctive word. Uh, it is also something that joins a, like a sentence together, right? So you'll see L over and over again, and it's not talking about the father. That's because it's a conjunctive word. Two. Two. Towards or into. You will see L as a prefix, as a, con as a conjunctive there, okay? L. Now, there'll be other times where we see those two letters and we're talking about the father. And, it, and again, it's a very truncated um, because that's the root of Elohim. It's a very truncated usage of the father's name. It's a very it's a very uh, generic, if I can say that respectfully. Uh, it means God in the English. OK, but in this case. When you see it in a sentence or when you see it at the beginning of, the, of a phrase or something like that, it's it's um, it's that it's like a prefix. OK. Next word is Bain, which is Bet Yod Nun. Bain. Bain means between. Between. Bet Yod Nun. That's the final note. Uh, uh, noon there. It, it sort of looks like the, the um, Vav. See how long it is, how it goes below the Bet. And, and they're right next to each other. So, so be mindful of that. Sometimes when you're spelling a word, you might want a noon and you hit the, uh, the the vav there. That's a very common mistake. Okay. So just be mindful of that. The vav and the noon, the final noon are right next to each other. Here's the, here's the other noon here. Okay. Bane, which means between. The next word. Only two letters, and that is, you may have heard this, if you, you know anything about um, Dr. Pigeon, you may have heard of the term Aleph and Tav, the Aleph and the Tav. This is a conjunctive word that you'll see a lot uh, in, the in the scriptures, Aleph and Tav together. Not only does it mean you, or uh, it's, it's the root of you, there, there should be a hey there, but uh, what... Google is not showing you is is some of the usage of it. It can mean with. So it so if you said with Jonathan or with 
whatever, you know, it would be the elephant tav in front of that word. So these are these are prefixes again, okay? With or beside is how you use the elephant tav. Very next is just one letter. B. B. And you would use this if you would say uh, in, you know, in the le in the end of days, because we just saw that as, uh, you know, an example there. In the end of days. The way you would say that in would be a bet in front of end of days. Ba. Akhret hayamin. Ba. Akhret hayamin. You see that? The ba. It's just the one letter. And that's a conjunctive letter or prefix. In Hebrew, it means in, at, with, or against. And you can use them uh, to say all of that with just one letter right in front of the, the phrase or whatever you're talking about. The next word is four letters. And it's a bet. Tav. Vav. Kaf. And it means in the midst of, in the middle, or inside of. And that word is pronounced betoch, betoch, inside. In the midst of, in the middle, inside of. The very next is just one letter. And it's called k. K. And it means about. About would be the word there. Or as. That would be another. Like. According to. Would be k. And it's this letter here. It looks like a C. Another one letter conjunctive of. Uh, is the Lamed. So just one letter, which is La. It means to or toward. To or toward. You see what I mean by conjunctive words? Jonathan goes to school. Okay, so it would be the Lamed would be the, the what joins it together as the two. So you'd see that in the phrase, and you wouldn't know it's saying Jonathan goes to school, right? And we have Lamed, Mem, Ein, Nun, Lahman, Lahman means an account of, for the sake of, and, but Google's got it as address, but you can see there, for the sake of, for the sake of, la man is the word, la man. And we got one more word that I'm going to give you today. And that is Muhal. Muhal is Mem Ein Lamed. And that means above, upward, or on top of. Muhal. And that's what I got for you for today. And these are, again, conjunctives and prefixes that you'll see over and over again in words and phrases and, and things you'll pull from the text um, even when you're when you're searching out a, an access term you might want to say above mount sinai right so it'd be mahal mount sinai <laughs> right that that would be your phrase all right that's what we got for today for your vocabulary. Easy day on vocabulary, not real hard. And we'll build more on the on the conjunctives and prefixes and even talk about suffixes at a later date. All right.
Scott, are you ready to share some some codes, brother? Um, yeah, I kind of have a lengthy presentation, um, just to let you know if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I'll improvise. Um, um, I've been waiting for you to be able to share. I want I want the, the folks to be able to see um, some of the codes that you're working on, and um, you know, okay. you're, you're actually working with uh, Code Finder and Torah Solve. So um, that's right. Yeah. So yeah, what do you got for us, brother? You, you um, share screen. Okay. Um, well, before I begin, I just want to say that this is a project that began in 2019 that came with a lot of deep personal revelation and a lot of research, and I shelved it, put it on the back burner because I was afraid that it was going to come with some rebuke and contention, but I feel like I'm being uh, led to pull this back off the shelf, and it's become a labor of love. It's been a labor of love since it began, but like I said, I shelved it. And this is a... Um, concerning the 144,000 and it's called the choice vine of the throne. And you ask, why is this called the choice vine of the throne? Well, I'll show you because how do you code the 144,000? Because if you, a sharing screen. Not yet, go. but you should be able to, there you go. Okay, so am I sharing now? You are, and Scott. By the way, um, tell tell them what, what you're using right here as your resource, because this is okay. going to be something um, that they can use, where they can see the English and the Hebrew simultaneously. That's a great this is, uh, resource. Yeah, this is called the uh, Dukrana Peshitta uh, tool. This is a great resource um, because if any of you are going to be looking for codes in the Peshitta, you'll want to use this as a resource. But anyways, how do, how, I asked myself, how do I code the 144,000? Because when you spell it, this is what you have right here in the, in the highlighted blue. Obviously, that's way too big. It's Chances are that's not going to come up as an access term. I mean, it's just way, way yeah. too much right there. So here's yeah, what just, I did. Let me just say, let me just say this. You you know that's that's read out in a sentence, right? But you can actually do it with letters where where yes. you come up with the sum. Okay, so there's another way of getting one hundred forty four thousand. So, which brings me to this: there's this there's this site on the internet called Torah Calculator. It's a gematria calculator. It'll give you the values of words, but see what it'll do is. On top of getting you, uh, giving you the standard value, it'll take the standard value of any word, it'll and it'll it'll do different mathematics with it: large subfeed, ordinal value, reduced value, squared values, um, full name value. What it does is it takes the standard value of the word of the gematria of any word. And it and it does different mathematics with it. So I was led to I was led to um, Isaiah five. This word here, serec, and serec is. Oh wait, I'm in the wrong one, Isaiah. Sarek is yellow muscat, and what yellow muscat is, it's it's a very fine grape that they use to make wine with. And here it's translated as the choice vine. See that? The choicest vine. So I go and I type this word into the Torah calculator. My next word is... Uh, Kafsamic. There's the calf. Kafsamic. That's throne. That's the word for throne. Right? So I have I have this word here. 
Sarek, and I have the next word, kus, which is for throne or cast. So I go back to my Torah calculator. Look what I have right here. This squared value. And it, and and mind you, it would it would take several words up here. It would take a long sentence to come up with 144,000 up in here on the standard value. So down here on the squared value, you have 144,000. And to me, that just, it rings true. It, I picture a nice vine growing off of the throne in the father's throne room. And I picture that as the 144,000. To me, it just has a nice ring to it. And the value is a perfect 144,000 right here. So I go to my, my program, pull up the choice vine throne. And there's going to be some back, background noise here. Sorry, folks. And I, my rule of thumb, my rule of thumb is, is I'm always going to look for the shortest, shortest skip at the first appearance, right? Pull up the Hebrew, pull up the English. Now, I'm not so much, in this case, I'm not so much concerned with what it says on the surface text. I'm looking for a number value. Maybe you guys can help me reconcile this because still to this day, I don't get it. Um, it it's found in Jeremiah 51, 27, and it has one letter in verse 28. It says, set you up a standard in the land. Blow the trumpet among the nations. Prepare the nations against her. Call together against her the kingdoms of Arat, Mini, Ashkenaz. Appoint a captain against her. Cause the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars. Prepare against her the nations, the kings of the Medes, the captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, land of dominion. Maybe they're a, a special warrior unit, you know? That's always what I thought of. And <laughs> another thing is, they're not women. I'm sorry. I, I've heard Dr. Pitchin's take on this. I love the man. I he, I consider him a great friend. I consider him one of the greatest scholars of this time. But he did a segment on this. And I, in this case, I don't agree with him. And here's why. You go to Matthew 25. And let's see. All right, if you uh, you look up the word versions and say Matthew 25, you can see there a woman who has not given birth. That's what a virgin is. Well, well, you, you, you've you got masculine and feminine um, uh, usage of, of in the Yeah, in the Aramaic, you do. Check it out. Now, when you go to Revelation 14, verse 4, these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. Most translations say maidens. Now, why would a maiden defile herself with a woman? It it doesn't make sense. And I don't buy the whole spiritual metaphor thing. Check this out. When you go to the word virgin here in this case, look what it says. A bachelor, a man, chaste and modest. Yeah. So you got masculine and feminine in 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 the yeah. usage, yeah. So here the Peshitta makes a distinction, whereas the Greek fails to do that. And um, this is where we get things lost in translation and how we get yes. false doctrine. Uh, I see where you're going, yeah. And and this yes. is a great example of how you you guys can use these resources and the codes to reconcile something that doesn't seem right. Um, so. I begin to um, do some coding on this, and I'm starting to see, I'm trying to reconcile some things that I, I haven't put my finger on yet. Perhaps it's a mystery. Perhaps the father 
doesn't want this to be revealed. Like, when does the sealing happen? When, when do they get sealed? You know, I'm thinking it's when Revelation 9 happens and the locust comes out of the pit, the locust army comes out of the pit. They're told not to harm the trees um, for, for five months, except only harm those that took the mark of the beast, right? And here in Revelation 14, you have them, um, they're commanded uh, there's command not to same thing, not to hurt the trees of the earth until the servants of uh, of Elohim are sealed on their forehead. Um, I don't know exactly where it is. I lost track of it. But anyways, so I'm trying to reconcile that. Trying to reconcile maybe when they were born. Um, you have this word here that I'm going to show you. Um, they're the first fruits from from among men. So they're they're the first fruits of the harvest. Yeshua is the first fruits of the resurrection, right? But you have this word here, bet het of resh yod mem. It's almost like bickery, but it's spelled with a het. And yeah, it's Bechorin. It means chosen young men. Mm -hmm. These are chosen young men, okay? But there's another meaning to that word, too. Yeah. Let's, let's pull up, actually, let's pull up the strong notes. Selected youth, young men. Yeah, and so this is what they call in Abib time with the barley, the young the young shoots, the young green yes. ears are called Bichlorim. These are, I believe these, the 144,000 144, are young men, much like in the book of uh, Numbers, when, when, they, when they came of age and they paid their half shekel tax and they were ready for war. That's how I picture these, this group, this specific group. Um, so you're going to see this word in the codes, which let's get into the codes now. I'm I'm done with my introduction. I just I had to kind of give this just to kind of bring everybody up to speed into the understanding and how I'm coding and how I'm coding this. No, it's great. It's they can see that how we use the different resources to to reconcile something and how you yeah. don't have to be fluent in Hebrew. You can see the text in English. You can see the text in Hebrew. You can figure out what's being said and what words are what. By using the the uh, resources that you're going to get. Actually, why don't we do this? I'll just go ahead and use the program. I do have annotations, but I'm trying to figure out whether or not there's a connection to Philadelphia. I, it's I'm not convinced that it is. I'm searching it out. Um, I have this first one here. This is uh, there's I'm, I'm trying, like I said, I'm trying to figure out when they get sealed, when they were born. So you're going to see all kinds of dates. You're going to see all kinds of years. 2016 to, seems to be a prevalent one, along with 2017. Um, 2017 may be a biggie because, you know, you have the Revelation 12 sign and the child getting caught up to the throne. A lot of people seem to think that the child caught up to the throne is the 144,000. That might be it. That might be it. Um, um, here in the white, you have this, the Shorek uh, Kus, the choice vine of the throne. That equals the 144,000 in squared value. Um, here you have that word uh, we just went over, the Bithurim, chosen young men. You have Betelot, which is the virgins. Um, somewhere you have Bekarim, your, um, right here uh, at, a, at, the, uh, at the page with. 
um, which is 2016, which you have right here at the same page with. Um, you also have 2016 right here. You have 2017 right here. Um, you have this term here, which means uh, the ones being sealed of, the ones being sealed, you have it again right here. You have it again right here. You have it again right here. Um, you have this right here, which means basically means the same thing, sealed. Um, you have the Betelot, the versions again right here. Um, you have 2017, like I said, right here in the light blue, making a skip, a row skip of about four. And then you have the first of Tishri, which is when the Revelation 12 sign happens, right here in the light blue. Um, you have to the throne, to the throne at the same page with, and check out what, what the uh, plain text says right here. Um, that's in uh, Lamentations, and that is 4, verse 2. And it says, the precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold, how they are esteemed as earthen pitchers, the work of the hands of the potter. The sons of Zion, I thought that was really cool. I thought that was a great fit. Um, so that's what I have for this table. Moving on, we're just gonna I'm just gonna kind of go through these pretty quick. I, I have so many. Um go ahead and close this out. Pull up the next one. Like I said, I'm trying to make a Philadelphia connection. I'm not convinced that they are connected to the Church of Philadelphia, but I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe this is how it gets figured out. I don't know. Well, can I just interject right here? Because I, yes. I, I've worked on this a little bit, man. And I got to agree with you with the Church of Philadelphia. Because when you look at it, at that, what it says about those, it, it, it is a mirror image of the Hebrews. Those that keep his commandments and, and honor his yes. name. Right? Okay. Yes. So my theory is, this is the first generation of Christians who come into Torah. And then the next generation, which would be what? The children of those people who are keeping Torah. Yeah. yeah. This is going to be where the 144,000 are going to come from. Yes. So, it could, yes. Yeah. So for every 144,000, you know, if you mathematically calculate the average family, which is about five, we're talking about 750,000 Hebrews. Okay. Because those. 144,000 are going to cover their family, their priest, their children their, that are priest, and they're going to cover their family, right? And it's because of their yeah. family that they are, um, you know, set apart, right? Yes. So we're, we're not talking about just 144,000 that that the Bible um, talks about. These are going to be the, the head of their tribe, their family, that are going to be representatives, but they're going to be representing, you know, their family. And their descendants and all you know, all the people that come behind them. It's not just 144,000. So, you know, and there are some religions like uh, I think what is it, Jehovah Witnesses that believe there are only 144,000 believers that are going to make it into heaven. Well, that's right. No, that's baloney. That's baloney because those baloney. those people, those individuals, have family members that they cover, right? So we're we're talking in the millions probably. There's a there's a great multitude as well. Exactly, and exactly. It's very possible that um Ezekiel 9, the man with the in clothed in linen with the inkhorn, he's part of the 144,000 marking the great multitude, or he's Yeshua marking the 144,000. I, I think it's more than likely one of the 144,000 marking the great multitude because the, the great multitude they 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 uh. They have the name of you as well. Um, but anyways. Um, so what's your access term here? Philadelphia here in the light blue. 
Philadelphia. And then here you have that choice vine throne right here in in uh, Jeremiah where I where I had first uh, demonstrated and pointed out. You have that this word here again, Bicharim. In the plain text. In the plain text. And um, you have Bicharim here at an ELS. Um, so is that is that an abacus effect out there with Bicharim, or is that in the plain text? And it's that's in the that's actually that's actually in the plain. Uh, well, it is. A, it's an abacus. You see that split? Oh there? yeah. 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 So um, if you read that, it doesn't have anything to do with uh, Bikurim, but it is an abacus effect. And we're going to talk about that as well, you guys. No, no, no. Look, look right here. See, it says young men. It actually is there. Actually, let me take this and it just shares. Looks like. It. You see that split between um, yeah. the right there and then that next yod? Unless that's a, a part of an ELS, is that Yoda part of an ELS uh, in, in your table? No, I, I, I'm thinking this is a a, uh, a bug in the system or something, a bug in the program, because it translates over here as young men. Okay, all right, yeah. no big deal. Yeah. Um. Anyways, you have uh, you have the Kobeed, which is the key. Um, at 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 the page margin, and you also have it over here in in code along with along with D David. He he of David, sorry, he of David, he in the white, David in the purple. Oh wait, starting down here. Sorry, Dalit Bob Yo Dalit. You got it all e. in one column at an at an um, ELS skip. Yeah. Yeah. Um here you, you guys have... see that you, you guys see that how, how that is all in one column yep. of going all the way up through the text. Um so I mean this is just uh, a few terms that come together trying to reconcile Philadelphia, you know, the Philadelphia scenario. Um, this next one, I really, this is a work in progress. Um, you guys are going to like this one. This is in Psalms. All right, here you have um, uh, 144,000 as an access term, that choice vine thrown. Right here, you have new song because they sing a new song to the lamb, right? You have new song right in the plain text. Um, let's see. Here. Oh, and it, get this. It's in chapter 144. <laughs> Interesting. You know, you, you will often see that where the numbers of where the numbers play a text. role. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, verse nine, I will sing a new song unto thee, O Elohim. Put a psaltery in an instrument of ten strings while I sing praises unto thee. Well, that's interesting because in chapter 14, they all have harps. That's what their job is. And they're singing a new song to Elohim. I mean, isn't that amazing? Um, for the hour of his judgment has come. Here we go. They sung, as it were, a new song for the throne before the four beasts and the elders. And no man can learn that song but the 144,000, which were redeemed from the earth. It's amazing. Um, so you have, you have new song. Right here, you have this word again, Bikurim, chosen young men. 
but let alone virgins right there in the plain text again. Um, up here you have um, noon, kuf, yod, mem, and that means blameless. They are found blameless before Elohim, much like the Messiah. Um, and then you have this word sealed, being sealed, overlapping twice, once here in the blue, het, me, het, het, sorry, het, tav, mem, yod, et, tav, mem, yod, twice, being sealed. You have bickering here in the plain text. Um, first fruits of the harvest. Which harvest is this? Uh, let's see. See, that's what I was telling you. It's connected also to the barley. Um, yes. In Abib time, where, where uh, it's called the time of Bikarin. Um, You know, and that's another thing, Jonathan. I'm trying to figure out if they're connected to the barley harvest or the wheat harvest. Um, you know, we're we're compared to grain, so it's one of those two, yes. barley, or barley or wheat, and, and yeah. they're they're different seasons. They do overlap a little bit, but uh, their harvest times are different. But in this case, it's talking about the firstborn of Mitzrayim when they were smitten. Yeah. But anyways, the bickering okay, is so, here. So at the time of Abib, we're talking about the early ears, the firstborn, the first yes. green ears. All right, that's why it's called bickering. Um, here we have, um, he, and we have here in the blue, David. So the key of David is here, um, encoded and let's see where that, that's at again here, 144, chapter 144, verse one, a Psalm of David, blessed be you who are my strength, which teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. It goes back to what I was saying about my thoughts on who they, who this group of of, of chosen young men are. They're warriors. Okay, so let's let's just let's just establish the pattern here. In the time of Zadok, which was the high priest of David, Zadok was both a priest and a warrior. All Levites at that time, wow. bear, they bared arms. They had a sword and they had a shofar. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's awesome. They declared. And they and they fought, and so uh, it's the same pattern. Um, what's what's very interesting here is, um, at the same page with you have, um, Taushin Ion Hey, which is uh, two thousand and fifteen. You also have it encoded here in orange. Um, Now, these are abbreviated versions of the year, but it works. Tav, Shin, I, and Hay again, 2015. Then, right here, you have Tav, Shin, I, and Vav, which is 2016. Then, right here, you have Tav, Shin, I, and Zion, which is 2017. All significant years because you had blood moons and you have Revelation 12 sign, which happened here. And then uh, in the plain text, you have to the throne, to the throne. You have the same thing encoded right here. And then we'll just go ahead and read it. And we'll read what's in the plain text right there. 139.16. That's one of my favorite scriptures, actually. Um, Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being imperfect. And then Thy book, all thy members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Oh, how precious also are these thoughts unto me, O oh Elohim, how great is the sum of them. Um, I think the guys over in Israel that were the progenitors of code searching um, really like this, this verse of Psalms because of that. Um, a substance was not hid from me I was when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth huh. 
anyways, I think that's why I had that highlighted. So we'll, we'll just go ahead and continue. Okay. These next two codes is when I use the page width along with the terms that I'm using to code out the 144,000. Okay, let me let me just stop here, Scott, and, and and point out what what you've been doing with all these different codes from different angles. I've 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 talked about triangulating yes. uh, to the students. How you want to work more than one code. If if you're trying to reconcile something, if you look and that's what he's doing, he's looking for the 144,000 and reconciling that. Right. You guys can see that, right? And you see the different tables he's doing. That's called uh, and this is not from the rabbis. I coined that term. It's called triangulating. Uh, you heard me talking about another term a moment ago, which was abacus effect. We'll talk about that later, and I'll show you what that means. Uh, but there's these terms sometimes that, you know, I, I couldn't figure out how to describe some of these things. And so we had to come up with, with a term. This is triangulating. And so Scott's done a, a really good job. If you look. Uh, down at the bottom, it, uh, he's he's got a huge margin in in this particular access term. But look what the width is. It's one hundred and forty four thousand. Now, some skeptics will say there are no codes here, but I disagree because this is the exact opposite of what the Isaiah twenty, uh, excuse me, Isaiah fifty three code is, which is a vertical strip of letters very similar to this that it's going up and down. You have the very same effect here, just going around the cylinder, around the width of the cylinder. That's why you have a huge margin. So some rabbis would say this width was too big, right? But no, there are codes there. So yes. you know, we go in against the grain with some of the what, what, what the rabbis say. And that's clear. What, what, you know, the things that we're, we're studying over here, um, we're, we're thinking outside of the box. So we're mm -hmm. not going to be held into some parameters that the rabbis say. They will tell you the only codes are found in, in the Torah. And it, as you can clearly see, this is the complete text. That's why we have a huge margin down at the bottom. That's from Genesis all the way through. And it's a yep. huge, it's, it's a small ribbon that goes around this cylinder. And it clearly has codes there. So the father knew what he was doing. Uh, and, um, you know, he could put a, he could put a row skip on this and, and spread it out a little bit. But um, for the sake of the number, right, right. 144,000, um, because Yah works in numbers, it, it's very significant. And the fact that he can find all these anomalies in that little strip of, of text there is not normal. That That's not normal, okay? I just, I just wanted to add that caveat, Scott. No, I, I appreciate you, brother. And I really do hope I am doing a good job on this because, you know, I – don't want to do any injustice to what the scripture says. And I, you know, I, like I said, when it came to calculating this number with these two words, this choice vine of the throne, you know, I was afraid that it would come with some rebuke in, in the fact that I had to explore some kind of, let me just say clandestine technique. I mean, I mean, it's okay to look at gematria, the number values. I mean, and if anybody says that it's not, you might as well start tearing pages out of your Bible, starting with, oh, let's say Revelation, and then yep. move on to the book of Daniel. Because well, here's the, the Bible. Thing. Here's the thing, God. And, and you know, the, the critics and the atheists will try to use science and mathematics to disprove the Bible. You know who, who created science and mathematics? <laughs> it was the creator. He was the one, right? And so yes. I think it proves it proves his divinity. And so um, I'm Absolutely. not one of those that believes that that gematria is a bad thing. The father, his fingerprint is very broad, and you can see his fingerprint all over this. Yes, um, it's why when I, I mean my jaw hit the floor when I saw this, and the, the way that it just expresses itself choice vine of the throne i mean it, it just has a, a nice ring to it and it it feels right and i know you won't find this in scripture but you you kind of will i mean it just depends on how you look at it you know it's i had to take a, a a different approach to this and 
I'm happy that this was glad that this was available to be able to figure this out and reconcile this. It was the only way I was going to reconcile this. Um, well, you guys, you got to understand that, that these Hebrew letters are not only letters, they're also numbers, but also yes. they have a pictorial, um, they're pictographs. And so they have a representation, some sort of, um, you know, visual meaning. Um, I actually, I, I pulled this up where I first showed you that it appears at the shortest skip in Jeremiah. And then I manually set the page with. 244,000. Um, excuse me. I can actually demonstrate that here when I get done presenting this, and I actually have an annotation for that. And you guys will learn how to do this. You'll you'll learn how to set page widths and 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 things like that. Um, that you can do it customly. The, the computer doesn't always have to choose it. You can you can choose it yourself if you would like. Yeah, yeah, you can you can put it in manually. Um, actually, there's some other terms that are new in there, but um, here you have the hundred forty four thousand. Um, you have uh sealed sealed with. And then you have my name, and that's pretty amazing that there's a connection right there. They're connected right there because they actually are. They're sealed with the name of Yahuwah on their on their foreheads. And and what does it say about the the, the ones of Philadelphia, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, this vertical term here is right there with it, connected to the psalmic. I thought it was really cool. It says sowed, cast. Yes, because the throne, there's that word for throne, calf psalmic. You'll often see it um, finalized with an aleph, but um, it still works with just the calf and the psalmic. You have this word sowed, psalmic bav dalit, secret throne. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Um, here you have um, the, the Messiah. Um, you have Yeshua, and then you have the Messiah up top in the purple. You have inheritance. I don't know why I have that there. I was thinking along the lines that they, that this is their inheritance, their position as being uh, in the one. Um, in the same line where you have the 144,000, you have... Um, Sealed by, and then the Messiah is here again. So being sealed by the Messiah, um, you have the messenger, the angel, then you have the first fruits here in code. Um, you have the sealing, and then you have in the plain text, you have 2026. Just, you know, it's there in the plain text. I, I, I don't. You know, I'm not sure if that's when it's going to be. It's just, you know, a hypothetical. The same the same date happens to appear in the uh, Revelation 9 uh, CERN tables. So if something should happen with CERN in 2026 and they let the Locust Army out, maybe it goes hand in hand. I don't know. Um so I have another table. I have another table that I did the same thing with where where I used uh, I used the number 144,000 as the page with. And, oops, if you lose track of where you're at, you can always hit the crosshairs and hit okay, and it'll bring you back to center. It'll bring you back to your code. 
because I always do that. I go like this, and I'm like, oh, I'm lost again. So I go over here, boop, crosshairs. Yeah, boop, what you did you was you spent you you spent your cylinder around because you can yep. you can rotate it all the way around, and that's one thing that might frustrate you guys. You might think you lost your work, and so that's kind of a good a good point. And we'll go over all these functions, uh, so you so you know how they work. So, my axis term is the 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 Bichlorine chosen young men, right? And what's amazing is you have the word for lamb down here, Shin Hey, the chosen young men of the lamb. And they, what do they do? They follow the lamb wherever he goes. That's what it says. Um, you have um, Shim Ki, the Shim He, the ones rejoicing. They're rejoicing. Um, you have Het, Bav, Tau, Mam, Yod, the ones being sealed. Uh, here you have Tav, Shin, Ayin, Vav, which is 2016. You have um, Betelot, Urgens here in the blue, and again in the purple in the same line. And you have um, Bikara, which is first firstborn, the firstborn. Same thing as first fruits, except a little different. Um, what does that say there in the plain text? That's Ezra 1 9. And this is the number of them. Huh. Yeah. This is the number of them. Uh, Mem, Kaf, Samic, Aleph, from the throne. This is the number of them from the throne. And um, you have what's here in the plain text. Isaiah fifty one eleven. Therefore, the redeemed of Yahuwah shall return and come with singing unto Zion. And everlasting joy shall be upon their head, and they shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. So, yeah, I mean, they're the redeemed from amongst men. And... To Yahuwah they shall return, and they shall come with singing. They're singing a new song in Zion. They'll be in Zion, standing on Zion, getting their crowns. Um, so I, you know, I read this and I thought that was a good fit for them. So I highlighted that verse. It's always good to have uh, some plain text scripture that reconciles your code. Um, I also have, well, yeah, you know, many times it's, that's what I've been telling them. Many times you will see the plain text plays a role with the context of your access term. So you're searching about the 144,000 and over and over again, you're finding verses that, that seem to point in that direction. Um, if you guys are friends with me on Facebook, I'm, I, I have to make an album for this on my, my page here. Um, I'm not going to go over all these because I don't want to take up too much time. But if you go to my page here, um, these are all the older ones that I did on this. I have probably now I'm probably working with about a dozen. But, you know, I've as you can see, I've coded this out as much as I can, and I'm just going to keep going. You know, it's like I said, this is a labor of love. Um, really involved table here. It would take me all night to go through this. Um, I'm really trying to do my due diligence with this. I want to do a good job. I, If I don't come to any conclusions, that's fine. It's been a real joy working on this because some revelation is coming out of this um, for myself and 
hopefully to the house of faith and, and to the world. I mean, I don't, I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't know if, if it's a dud, then, you know, at least I, it, it blessed me, it blessed my heart and it blessed my being and it blessed my spirit knowing that maybe there's some answers here. Maybe, you know, I think you did have, you had some really good methodology, Scott. Um, and I think you did a, a great job pre presenting that you did a great job showing some of the, the, um, uh, resources that we use. And I mean, if you, if you look at all these codes, it's got amazing clustering, right? So they're not just insignificant, um, random occurrences. Right? You see, you, you see a, a common theme with these terms that keep coming up in these tables that yeah. kind of thread all this together, you know, and, and, you know, praise Yah and, and praise Yah that, you know, we can have this resource to not only figure things out in the world and with prophecy, but to, to shed light on his word because his word is mysterious at times. And there are some things that are left to ponder and to pray about and meditate on. And we have this tool here in the codes to, to reconcile his word. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and, you, you know, if you, if you like adventure, if you like um, ex exploration. And I used to love to, to run around the woods and explore different things. This is another way of doing that, especially if you're into. The yes. Um, yes. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a great way to explore and to look at the deeper things, because we know that the Bible is layered. It's not just what it says on its surface. It's speaking deeper than what's just on the surface. Yeshua is a very great example of that. All the words that he said most of the time were a parable, right? And we're supposed to read into and understand what he's saying. There's, I want to show you guys. the a message I'm, there. I'm right? sorry, Jonathan. I didn't mean no, to no, cut no. you off. No, you're doing great, brother. I want to show you guys. If you guys are friends with me on Facebook, I have an album actually um, dedicated to this. And I want to show you how this all started. A sister had contacted me. And uh, on the day of Tuba Shavet, uh, Tuba Shavet, you know the day of the trees, right, Jonathan? It's it's sometime early in the in the late, it's sometime in the late winter, right? Tuba Shavat, you've heard that, right? It's a it's not one of the feast days. It's kind of it comes before Purim, I think. It's after Sukkot. And it's after the Feast of In Gathering. And it's sometime before Purim. Anyway, she showed me a picture. This was on her son's window on a on a cold winter day. This is what the frost had done to her window, on her son's bedroom window. Um, on that day. And um when I saw this picture, it just it kind of, it brought in a flood of information in my spirit. And when I think of what I'm looking at with this choice vine, and I see this, it, it kind of, it brings me back to that day when, when the flood of, of revelation started coming in, you know what I mean? Um, she started sharing some things with me about her family and I started talking to her and her husband and and I thought maybe there was something going on with that child later on it comes and I you know I I told her how important it was to come out of um the, the pagan mystery religions you know what I mean and 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 to stop observing the pagan holidays and you know, and, and how important it was to um, embrace the restoration of the house of Israel. And I, I kind of laid it down for her, you know. Later on, I come to find out that they were still celebrating Easter, Christmas. You know, they, they didn't listen, you know. And I'm still praying for that situation because I thought maybe there was something going on. But this picture right here, really is what started it for me um so 
you know, it comes with a lot of personal revelation, but it, it, you know, it morphed into all of this, you know, and it's not like I'm not getting results. I'm, I'm getting results and praise y'all for that. You know, I, I'm, I'm glad that I kind of took it off the shelf and I'm really going to be drilling into this. Um, but if you guys want to look at this stuff, these tables, you know, I kind of know I kind of went through them quick. I'll be putting a folder together and I'll, I'll put it up in discord, the links, all the links. So you guys can have the links and, and look at this stuff anytime you want to. So very good. That's my, that's my presentation. Good job, brother. What a, what a great example of, um, you know, using the codes as a tool to reconcile something. And, and that was, you know, really good methodology there. Um, triangulating using more than one access term to, um, you know, establish a matter. You know, we need more than one witness. If, if you're working a, any kind of code and you just do one, um, you know, I would say you have limited information that you need to, you know, work at least a couple. And that's, and that's when you're trying to reconcile something, especially from the scriptures. Um, you want to look at it from every angle. Um, so great, good job, great, Scott. Yeah. Appreciate you great, helping yeah. out today. Um, appreciate you, brother. And I appreciate everybody here. And praise Yah. Praise Yah. Amen. So I, I want to... Um, I, I, I got this little micro documentary that came across my feed that I thought was kind of cool. I don't agree with everything the guy says, but I wanted to share it with you with you all today and, and help inspire you and kind of give you some more background and with where some of these things are coming from and um, you know what it what it's doing on the world stage right now. Um, it's been a field that hasn't been in the, in the mainstream and on the forefront. It's, it, uh, uh, you know during time of draws then when he first came out of his book, but um, a lot of people, a lot of believers lost their interest in it because um, they were looking at this thing as a, a, so, sort of like a crystal ball. And most of the things that Michael draws and said didn't come true. And um, I, you know, I, I've always felt like that's the wrong way of looking at this, that I, I don't think the father gave us a crystal ball. I think he gave us a, a tool to reconcile the word, but Everything it was, is, and will be is encoded there. And at the whim of the Holy Spirit, that can, you know, something that is prophetic or, you know, predictive, so to speak, is could, could happen at any time. Uh, and we've demonstrated that over and over again here uh, with some of the things that we found, um, sometimes years in advance. Um, more recently here was the election of the last election where, we could clearly see for 11 months that um, Donald Trump was not going to be president. It was going to be the other guy. And uh, it was not going to be nice. Okay, and I can't say too much on that because I got dinged for misinformation, even though we all clearly could see what happened. Uh, and I called it. Uh, they dinged me on that. And so, I, you know, it's so strange with Facebook, uh, YouTube. If you say the wrong thing, uh and it doesn't line up with what what youtube says that you can say they'll they'll ding you for it and uh so which that's kind of tried it anyway i want to transition now over to this this uh video that came across my feed that i thought was really interesting and um points it, I, I like the way he does this video pr production i wish i could do this kind of thing but i don't have the time um to put this kind of stuff together and uh I appreciate the effort of, of these other guys that, that have interest in the codes and do that. So I want to share this video with you and inspire you with this. Every major event in world history, every major figure in world history appears to be encoded in the Bible. Imagine a text so complex that within its age-old pages, it contains an intricate, unseen design of hidden codes and secrets. These secrets are not just about events of the distant past, but also about the present, the future, and astonishingly, about our individual lives. This isn't the plot of a cryptic thriller novel, but a theory surrounding one of the world's most wildly read books, the Bible. 
Proponents of the Bible code theory propose that encoded within the Bible's original Hebrew texts lie detailed messages and prophecies that can be unlocked through a particular decoding method. But could it be true? Could the ancient texts really hold detailed prophecies of historical events? Do they whisper the trajectories of our personal lives, our births and our deaths? We'll try to find out together in the new episode of Secret Origins. Welcome. For thousands of years, profound thinkers, spiritual teachers and visionaries have cherished a unique enigmatic document that is believed to hold the outcomes of all potential decisions we could ever make in our lives. In September 1994, Itzhak Rabin, the then Prime Minister of Israel, was delivered a creepy message warning him of a threat to his life. The warning originated from an unexpected source. It claimed to be based on a hidden code within the Bible. The cautionary message, however, was dismissed. A year later, the Prime Minister met a tragic end. He was assassinated. The shocking fact is that the secret code within the Bible had only forecasted Rabin's assassination. All right, so I just wanted to pause right here and just show you the, the striking similarity to the Donald Trump table. Uh, the only difference is this anomaly is vertical right next to his name, uh, which is, is this is very similar. Um, the only difference, this one says the assassin who will assassinate and in Donald Trump's vertical right next to his name, it says the name of the assassin. Uh, so it implies that there will be an assassination. Assassination, but also precisely indicated the date and even the name of the assassin. It turns out that the encoded within the ancient text of the Bible, written millennia ago, are forecasts of every significant global event encompassing even the alarming events that are yet to happen. This is now known as the Bible Code. So what exactly is the Bible Code? An 18th century scholar known as the genius of Vilna said, the rule is that all that was, all that is and all that will be until the end of time is included in the Torah from the first word to the last. But how it is possible that such events can be predicted? And by the way, you guys, uh, it's not just in the Torah. It, it goes through the whole text and not just the text that we're searching, but all of the Hebrew text. Thousands of years ago, the three primary religions that worship the God of Abraham, Christianity, Islam and Judaism encompass more than half of the global population, an approximate total of over 4 billion people. Since their inception, followers have sought to extract meaning and answers from their respective religious texts. This has typically been done through the interpretation of symbolism and allegory. However, a new wave of computer scientists and mathematicians have discovered concrete information encoded in the Old Testament. The Old Testament, written about 3000 years ago, originates from the 24 books of the Hebrew Bible. Despite being one of the most ancient texts, its contents have remained consistent over millennia. When scribes replicated the Old Testament, even a single mistake necessitated the burial of the entire transcript. But why was such precision necessary? The conventional belief is that any alteration of God's words would be regarded as blasphemy. Yet, there might be a more technical, rational, that hidden within the texts are cryptic messages from God or another entity. In the late 13th century, Rabbi Bahia ben Asher unveiled a code concealed within the book of Genesis. The method he used was simple. He selected four letters, then skipped 42 letters before selecting another four and so on. When these chosen letters were connected, they formed a new passage depicting the creation of the moon. This string of letters also stated that the lunar month precisely spanned 29.53 days. This was a remarkable revelation considering the exact length of the lunar month wasn't calculated until 1996 by none other than NASA. But how was it possible? 
The concept of a equidistant letter sequence or ELS, also known as a skip code, was reintroduced in the 1940s by Rabbi HMD Vice Mandel. Resurrected Rabbi Ben Asher's work showing that by selecting a letter or a group of letters, skipping a specific number of letters and repeating this process, new words could be formed. This process was initially arduous and time-consuming, but the advent of computers simplified the process exponentially. Later on, computer programs improved on the skip code technique by implementing more complex search parameters. They took the letters, discovered via the skip codes and formed long strings of text, which could then be divided into lines of varying lengths. This allowed new messages to be discovered by searching the text horizontally, vertically and diagonally, much like a word search puzzle. In 1985, mathematicians Elijah Ripps, Doran Whitsum and Joaf Rosenberg leveraged this technique in a series of tests named the Great Rabbis Experiment. They compiled a list of 34 famous rabbis, encyclopedia of great men in Israel and input these names into their program to decipher if they were encoded in the Bible. This astonishing discovery was that all these names, despite the fact that these men lived hundreds or even thousands of years after the Bible was written, were encoded within the Bible. They input the names of renowned rabbis into their computer program, which was then instructed to sift through various skip codes and grid size in search of these names. Once a match was identified, the program searched horizontally, vertically and diagonally for dates that intersected with the names, which were then cross-referenced with the known birth and death dates of each rabbi. The results of this experiment were shocking. Not only were all the names of the rabbis found encoded within the Bible, but their birth and death dates were also discovered intersecting the names. In the end, they found the names of a total of 166 men encoded in the Bible, a phenomenon that occurred thousands of years before any of these men were born. Dr. Ripps estimated the odds of this happening by chance at around 1 in 10 million. The undeniable conclusion was that the Torah codes were a real phenomenon, not merely coincidental. The trio published the results of their groundbreaking study in the peer-reviewed journal Statistical Science. The study stirred controversy with several experts trying to find an error, yet no one could refute their findings. But could this information be random? Could it be encoded in other documents? They tested the Bible code in several other books, including Webster's Dictionary, huge novels like the book War and Peace, the book Moby Dick, and all of these other texts, the codes do not work the way they do in the Torah. The intrigue deepened when this theory was retested in a rigorous 440-hour experiment in 1997. Unlike the original study conducted by mathematicians, this time the research was led by a former senior cryptologic mathematician for the US National Security Agency, Harold Gans. Motivated to debunk the Bible code, Gans created his own computer program. However, the results surprised him. His program not only identified the names of the rabbis and their birth and death dates within the Bible, but it also pinpointed their places of birth and death. In his resulting paper, Gans concluded that the findings were statistically more than significant. These weren't accidental discoveries. There were indeed a code embedded within the Torah, specifically in the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, a code uniquely present nowhere else. And again, you guys, we have clearly discovered that this is not true. It goes all the way through the Bible. Uh, I suspect the reason why that they suggest this is because of the Messianic codes, all the ones that point to Yeshua, especially Isaiah 53. They don't want to address that, okay? In a similar way, in 1990, Dr. Ripps found himself intrigued by a novel idea. His previous research had successfully identified information about rabbis who had lived centuries prior. Still, he started to wonder, 
Could the Bible hold encoded information about people who are still alive as of 1990? During the early 90s, Saddam Hussein was an internationally recognized figure. Intrigued, Dr. Ribs decided to enter the Iraq leader's name into his program, curious to see if he could be located within the encoded patterns of the Bible. Remarkably, Hussein's name emerged from the code. Even more astonishingly, the code predicted that he would instigate an attack on Israel within the span of three weeks. As foreseen by the Bible code, Hussein did indeed initiate an attack. The program revealed more fascinating connections. For example, when the encoded sequence spelling President Kennedy was examined, the succeeding letters in the same skip sequence revealed the words to die, with Dallas encrypted in the vicinity. Similarly, when Shakespeare was searched for, the following words in the equal distance sequence read, will present place on stage, within the names Hamlet and Macbeth encrypted in the same segment. In 1992, an American investigative journalist named Michael Drosnin was working on a story about conflict in the Middle East. While in Israel, he came across Dr. Ripp's research. Drosnin, who was a non-believer, was initially skeptical about the notion of divinely encrypted messages within the Bible. However, the story intrigued him enough to explore further. His initial meeting with Dr. Ripps, scheduled for just an hour, ended up extending as Drosnin was drawn into the fascinating world of the Bible Code. Over the next few years, Drosnin collaborated with Dr. Ripps to decode over a thousand historical events concealed in the Old Testament. For example, in the book of Genesis where God instructs Abraham to look now toward heaven and count the stars, the encoded passage revealed the date July 20th, 1969 and the words like spaceship and Apollo 11. Encoded phrases such as economic crisis, depression, stocks and the year 1922 were found to intersect. The word Oklahoma was found intersecting with Mura, the building targeted in the Oklahoma City bombing, along with the phrase, his name was Timothy. In May 1994, the schumacher levy comet was a hot topic in news outlets worldwide. The scientific community was speculating about its potential collision with Jupiter. Intrigued by this, Drosnin ran a search in the Bible code. Remarkably, he discovered the exact term schumacher levy intersected with will-bound Jupiter. Moreover, the precise date of the impact, July 16, 1994, crossed this phrase. The same year, Drasnin turned his attention to Itzhak Rabin, Israel's Prime Minister. Again, the code yielded intriguing results. Rabin's name appeared intersected by the ominous phrase assassin will assassinate. The Hebrew date 5756 crossed the phrase a date looming just months away. In Hebrew, numbers can also signify words. In this context, 5756 could be translated as will you change it. Drasnin interpreted this as a possible indication that he could intervene to prevent the prophecy from being fulfilled. Determined to do his part, he sent a warning to the Prime Minister. Unfortunately, Rabin dismissed the warning and tragically, a year later, he was assassinated, just as the Bible code had indicated. The coded information in the Torah seems to adhere to the rule conceptualized by mathematician Werner Heisenberg in his Uncertainty Principle. This principle was then summarized by a renowned physicist, Stephen Hawking, who stated, quantum mechanics does not predict a single definite result for an observation, instead it predicts a number of different possible outcomes and tells us how likely each of these outcomes You guys, I, I want to point out right here on this concept that he's talking about. This is called Monte Carlo. And they do have supercomputers. Uh, I happen to know from some resources that Mossad and CIA 
both you supercomputers that in, that use Monte Carlo method that calculates the outcomes and tells us the probability of each one of those. So they're using codes, the Bible codes, to predict outcomes. Is everybody follow what I'm talking about? There used to be a, a, a TV show on CBS called Numbers that this was based on. It was called about probability and statistics. Okay, so they're they're using these codes to predict possible outcomes and calculate the most probable, and that's what they go with. Okay, outcomes is. It seems this is how the Bible codes operates. It doesn't necessarily predict a fixed future, but when asked a specific question, it reveals a range of potential outcomes. There's growing suspicion that this phenomenon could be a form of a quantum code. But the thing is that this is only possible with the Torah, but why exactly with it and not with any other book? The Torah consists of the initial five books of the Hebrew Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. There are also the first five books of the Old Testament in the Christian Bible. Interestingly, there is something distinct that sets these initial five books apart. For example, their origin is largely shrouded in mystery with much of what we know is based on legend, historical records, and speculation. Tradition holds that these five books, collectively referred to as the Torah, were received as unified document in Mount Sinai in Egypt. In the original versions of the Torah, the alphabet primarily used is Hebrew. Intriguingly, every letter of the Hebrew alphabet has been associated with a particular number, the origin of which remains mysterious. When dealing with the Bible code, these Hebrew letters are transformed into their corresponding numeric values, replacing the visual perception of letters on a page with a series of numbers. The process entails stripping away all spaces and punctuation reminiscent of the believed original presentation of the Torah when it was delivered to earth roughly 3000 years ago. This leaves us with an interpreted sequence of numbers forming an array or a matrix comprising exactly 3004 805 numbers that can be propped and curated in different ways by a computer. This letter matrix is known as a dynamic matrix and it's able to adjust based on the queries it's subjected to. Initially, it begins with 64 rolls, each containing 4,772 numbers. However, as we start curing this matrix, its rolls and columns can be dynamically realigned to suit the query. The way this matrix is probed aligns with the principles outlined in the scientific paper primarily using ELS searches or what is more casually known as skip codes, which we mentioned earlier in this video. These skip codes entail starting with a specific letter within the Torah and counting a certain number of letters to find the next significant letter in the sequence. Consider for example a skip code of 50 applied to the book of Genesis, which start with the first Hebrew letter of Genesis. Bear in mind, this code only works with Hebrew letters, not translations, and count 50 letters or numbers, considering our conversation forward. Doing so leads to the letter T, followed by O, R, H, when skipping 50 more letters each time. With vowels omitted in Hebrew, these letters form the word Torah. This is a simple example of how these skip codes function. According to Greg Braden, a best-selling author and researcher in the fields of spirituality and human potential, the beauty of understanding these Torah codes lies in the insight they offer into the tapestry of possibilities within our existence, as dictated by the Divine Matrix. We, as part of this integrate weave of time, are subject to its rules and laws until we come to understand them. Our biology even allows us to hack time, enabling us to expedite certain processes such as healing or fostering peace. 
Unlocking these mysteries enables us to comprehend and tell a new human story, one that speaks of our relationship with the underlying matrix of reality. Whether it's major world events or the miniature of daily life, everything we experience is encompassed within the possibilities already encoded into this ancient temporal map, the Bible Code. So in exploring this incredible concept of the Bible Code, we unravel a fascinating layer of complexity within our universe. We find that reality, time and even our personal destinies can be found in ways that challenge traditional perspectives. The code hidden in ancient texts stirs our curiosity and urges us to seek understanding of this intricate matrix. Our ability to interpret and interact with this coded information may well determine our future trajectory as individuals and as species. We bow before you and thank you for watching another episode of Secret Origins. Keep your minds open and until we meet again. So, a very good presentation. Uh, somebody sent that to me today and I thought, oh, wow, that's that's really a, a good. I wish I could do the videography that that guy did and uh, put something together as, as well as he did. <coughs> but that's not my forte. <coughs> All right. So we're coming to the end of class. You guys were well over an hour here. Before we do, Jeremy wanted. Did, did you want to talk to about 9-11, uh, brother? Um, I didn't forget your comment earlier. Is there something? You well, um, yeah, I, I just had some questions. Um, I've seen you kind of build a couple codes. Um, I don't quite remember the context, whether you were just showing them or whether you were saying, oh, look at the context or whatever. But um, were, were there, in regards to what people say uh, with conspiracy theories and such, um, and I suppose this can could apply to not just 9-11, but uh, anything. Um, can we... Did, are there phrases that have come out in, in the, those codes when they've been re-examined that show something other than the official narrative? Absolutely, yeah. Let me just say this. Um, just like, okay, so would, would false flags just like with the Kennedy assassination, just like the Gulf of Tonkin, just like with the Liberty, with it, you know, Israel, all these different occasions where we have false flags, there's always a patsy, okay? Bin Laden was a patsy. Bin Laden was a very well-known enemy of the state. And what the codes reveal in this, and I don't mind telling you this, uh, we worked, we've worked this, this subject over like a... <laughs> You wouldn't believe, okay? That was no, one. I, I think I recall you showing some things that that, yeah. that are in that respect, and and I'm. Um, so it's 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 we can see in the codes, brother, that our government knew that there was a conspiracy to do what these guys did. This wasn't their first attack. That if you remember, the first attack that happened were vans that were parked in the in below the 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 uh, building in ninety three. Yeah, yeah. yeah that were blown up so the the uh the alphabet agencies knew um that there were muslims that wanted to do this okay the, the, this goes deep and very diabolical you guys i don't know if you know who larry silverstein is but he's a jewish businessman billionaire mogul and uh I, he's a traitor to this nation um that guy took out insurance money because he knew that those buildings were going to come down. Okay. He knew there was a conspiracy to fly airplanes in it. And by the way, jet fuel don't burn steel. Okay. What we saw in those, in those videos and what the codes reveal and what more than 2,800 architects have said is thermite was used in taking those buildings, explosives. And, and I, I'm very familiar with thermite as a marine engineer using explosives to, to blow things up, to cut steel and, and using shape charges and things like that. Thermite uh, is exactly what we saw on the video, which was like it, it rained down like sparks. It was the steel was burning and uh, cutting 
And so, you know, everything was planned out. The fact that the building seven fell the way that it did, you guys, 2,800 architects viewed that video and said it's impossible. It is impossible for a building to fall like that with just minor damage from the what, what happened all around it. Okay, so it was planned out. The man, Larry Silverstein, made billions of dollars in insurance in this, right? Okay, there was testimony about um, Israeli agents being in that building for weeks beforehand, setting charges and shit. That All that plays out in the codes, you guys. We can see it. And uh, this is very passionate for me. You know, a couple of years ago, I had a friend of mine who was a photographer down in, at Ground Zero. And uh, he was inhaling all of that stuff. And uh, he died a couple of years ago from... JD? Yeah, JD. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, JD I'm, was I JD. JD was there when the buildings fell, you guys taking yep. pictures and he stayed there. And just like with all the first responders and all the thousands of people that died, not just the ones that died on that day, people are still dying today from cancer, from breathing in all those, those fumes and things from stuff burning. And, uh, and so it, it, it's horrible. Not just 3000 people died. Like the code said, there were, there was re just a a shock wave of people dying over the years you know most of the firefighters and all that survived that and all the police officers there that were there you guys realize that 90 percent of those people are dead right now they're gone because of the cancer that they they got from being in that pit okay it the code shows the Mossad had a big hand in it the CIA had a hand in it that George Bush knew Something was going to happen. And here's the thing. Just like with, with, with Hamas and Israel and the attack, they allowed it to happen. You know why? What happened after 9-11? What do we do? We Hoorah. Went, Hoorah. Round the flag, everybody. Let's go get them. That's right. Yeah. We went to war, and there's nothing more profitable than war. Yeah. But how do you get the whole of America to want to go to war so that the war profiteers can make money? Got to get everybody on board. How do you do it? You heard them. You heard them. You shock them. Shock and awe. Remember that? You, you do something very so shocking like, like um, Pearl Harbor, where you have thousands of young Americans willing, coming out of high school, signing up at the, at the, uh, at the Marine Corps Depot and at the Army uh, place, uh, you know, with the recruiters ready to go, just so gung ho and patriotic because they've been done wrong. They've been attacked and they've been programmed to go and kill. That's why they did it. Well, that's why they did Pearl Harbor, too. And that's Pearl why Harbor they was... did it. Pearl Harbor was another. Listen, yep. the American government knew Pearl Harbor was going to be attacked, just like they knew yep. that, that the USS they... Liberty was going to be attacked, just like they knew Gulf of Tonkin was going to happen. It was all red flags. You have to have a reason to go to war. You can't just go yep. because you want to make some money. you got to have the whole population who's paying the tax money for it to be on board. How do you do that? you got to hurt them. <laughs> You got to hurt them in, in the heart, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I can tell you, Jeremy, that those codes and and not just me, but many people work those and it, it comes back diabolical, man. Oh, every bit of that is psychological warfare. Uh, it's all yeah. charade. It's all, you know, a, a, just even, listen, even the, the Edward R. Murrow building that was blown up in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Yep. That was known about, man. Yep. They knew about that and they let, they let it happen. And then they killed, the, the, you know, Timothy McVeigh, who was willing to be a martyr, but never going to his grave telling the whole story, it, it, only implying that this <laughs> this was not what you thought. This is bigger right. than what you think, right? The, yeah, that, that covered up a number of things going on in Arkansas. So, yeah. Yep. Um, in the in a, in the same vein, I, I've I've seen in the uh, documents uh, document document uh, I can't even say the word. Right now. Um, Sean's bringing up a good in, point too. Th okay. Listen, all of this came about the Patriot Act came about yeah. because of all of this crap. And what yeah. did that do? That was just another layer that they laid on us 
because of this and terrorism and stuff. The now they can spy on, on you. Now the war on terrorism. Now they can spy on you. They, they can listen to your phone calls. They can hack your your computers. They can look at your emails and this FISA stuff we're seeing going on now. The, the, they've used the direct result of that. And to invade the Middle East, that's the beginning of the war, the prophetic war. It was like a, an Illuminati ritual that really started the end times, 9-11. It was all coded. 9-11 yep. is basically when we lost. It started, I think, even before that. But 9-11 is really when we lost our freedom as, as Americans. Because now, and if you notice, any town that you're in right now, if you at any stoplight, look up, look above at the stoplight and see what you see. Cameras. What do you see there? There's always cameras. Cameras there, everywhere. At least three. Cameras everywhere, just like in China, just like in Great Britain. Big Brother is right there, and they're watching everything, right? And and the reason because we gotta we gotta we gotta monitor and we gotta police all these people because we don't know right. And imagine now with all <clears> these <throat> coming across the border, it's even worse. We got we got millions of criminals in this country. You know, people come from all countries of the world. They want to do harm here. They want to someone to make a better living, right? But not all of them. They're here to do do bad things, right? <laughs> so, especially the Chinese ones. The more than I think I, I, I saw somewhere they were talking about more than fifty thousand Chinese, uh, um, you know, military age men. Not with their family. You're not coming here to migrate with their families. It's military no. age men coming across the border. What are they doing here? It's part of the invasion. Hmm. Yeah. yeah it's invade from within. That's right, from within. So we're living in crazy times right now, you guys. And um we we do have um we, we've got access to the most high. And as I've been trying to teach you in this course. Um, with the ephod and with using the codes and, and use it in conjunction with your prayer life and your spiritual walk. It's a tool. Uh, again, the ephod was not to be bling for the for the high priest. It wasn't about the, the way he looked. It had a function, right? So this, this is the same premise. These codes have a function. They're not just there for amusement and entertainment, right? The, the creator of the universe put them there for a reason. And um, it's mathematically proven. I know there's critics. I know there's critics, but they got a, agendas here. We're talking about atheists and don't believe in a yeah. creator. Okay. I believe in the creator and I know he's, it, it, there's nothing impossible for him. So he put everyone there. Everything that was, is, and will be is there. But also some of these other things like, uh, you know, uh, in, in the video we just saw there, that, that the fact that the rotation of the, of the moon which is 29.5 days is encoded and was known about long before mathematics and NASA proved, right? And that's that's just one. We're, we're talking about thousands and thousands of, of anomalies that, that have been found in the codes that are just not normal. It's not randomness. There's no way, you, you know, all, all of these things are encoded there and just we're, we're, we're supposed to expect all these things are, are random? No. Absolutely not. This this sets aside. This sets apart the the book as being true to what it it's represents, right? So, uh, real, real quick, one more one more thing. Yeah, uh, that last video was not the first video I've seen that poses the idea of asking a question. Absolutely, and I think you you you've kind of stated it that way when talking about the ephod. How is it that you ask a question of the of the of the code? Or how I mean, are you yeah. are you asking your, yourself the question and then coming up with the most logical answer and then searching that answer, or are you, or and, how, how is it you ask a code of of the ephod? Is it okay? Right? Okay, let me tell you about that. And I've I've spoke about this before. How there there one part of this is the ruach hakodesh, and I cannot provide right. that. Right. right? Everybody right. has to have their own relationship with the ruach and your own prayer life. But I but I challenge you to do this, especially when you start searching codes and you're looking for something deep. In your prayer life, you ask a question to the Father. Father revealed so and so and so and so, and I'd like to know about this. Please help me to understand this, or whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. And you listen, you listen in your meditation in your prayer prayer life, and you'll hear something. You may not know whether it's your voice or whether it's the Father or whether it's the enemy, 
But regardless, you'll hear something. Pay attention to that. Write it down. Okay? And then go search it out and see if it pans out to anything. If it does right. pan something out, pan out, you know it's not your voice because you don't know these hidden things. It's not right. you telling you that. And the enemy don't know it. Right? Only the Father knows what's in, hidden in his word. And the scriptures are very clear that he hid those things for his children. Right? So in your prayer life, your your active part in that, right? Talk to the Father. Talk to Yeshua. And and, and say, here I am, Father. I'm 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 following you. Re your word says you will reveal these deep and hidden things to your children. I want to know this. Help me to understand so and so. And and then give it some time, maybe a day, maybe two, and and, and let the Holy Spirit work with you. Meditate it. Don't, don't just go get preoccupied. Mm -hmm. actually take time and think about it and, and be in a prayerful moment about it and see what you hear and write that down. You may get a word. Okay. So the, one of the gifts of the spirit is a word of knowledge, right? Yeah. So when the Ruach is talking to you, he'll say this and say that. Um, there's a, there's a uh, scripture somewhere that says that the Holy spirit in the end times will direct the people and say, go here and go there. Right. So that's, that's something you're going to hear in inside you that's not gonna in my opinion it's not gonna be a, a audible thing that you hear that, but i won't put y'all in a box and say it. it's not impossible but in my experience it's something i've hear in myself right and so how do you reconcile whether it's the enemy you or y'all just like that just like that you can search it out if he leads you somewhere then you know it's him and you can feel it you can feel when you're on the, on the trail of something hot or whether this is going nowhere. Uh, I, I, I can't put it any other way. You'll know it. And and every door will open. Every time you hear something on that same subject, it, it turns into something. It manifests into something. Right? And before long, you got a table in front of you that has all these anomalies that are mathematically impossible to be randomness. It's beyond that. Right? And so that's when you know you're in the zone. Okay? So um, that's my goal for each one of you. And I think that you guys are going to do really well from what I've seen from, from previous, um, you know, students from when I was doing the school years ago. And many of them are doing very well in their research and what they're looking at. You guys will do just as well. And so, um, again, we're just getting started. Any more questions? None. All right. Oh, thanks, sir. We've run almost two hours today. I want to end it right here. I want to pray for you guys. Listen, um, stay tuned to Discord. I'll update you guys. And when we can start doing the downloads, as I said at the beginning of this class, we got that figured out. And we're going to systematically move through each one of you and each one of your machines. And whatever um, issue comes up, we're going to work through it. And we're going to get everybody on the same sheet of music. And then one day we're going to be in a symphony together and collaborating and it's going to be amazing i'm honored to be here with you guys I, it's a privilege of mine to do that and it, again like i said earlier it's it's like me putting you on your bicycle and taking up the, the training wheels and i'm like grandpa running next to you with pride that you're doing so well and uh, you're going to do great things so um thank you for being here you guys uh let me pray for you we'll see you in the next class same time um, we may make, make some modification. I had a, a brother message me from Australia and the time, <laughs> the time slots are such where he can't be in class and he just misses it. And uh, he really wants to be here. So maybe we might, we might modify the timing um, to accommodate him. So anyway, uh, let me bless you with a prayer. Abba Yehua, we're so thankful, Father, for each one of these students. Pray that you go with them this week, Father, that you keep them protected that you would inspire them, that you would heal them in the body if they're sick. Bring them back at the appointed time. We ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. All right, you guys. Much love Thank to you. Thank you, Jonathan. Bless you. Thanks, Jonathan. Bye. Absolutely. Bye, everyone. We love you guys. We'll see you in the next Thank week. you.